Yeah, go ahead, Alice. Sure, hopefully you can actually hear me. Yep, you can. Um, so hi, I'm Alice, and uh, my position is going to be um, uh, against uh, Lana's position. Um, my position is that uh, social media has uh, not been entirely negative. Um, I'm not really sure. You know, we'll get into the details when uh, she introduces her position. Nice. Uh, Lana? Um, I'm Lana. Um, I'm not arguing that um, social media is entirely bad, but that it's more bad than good. So. Okay, amazing. Nice. Uh, do you guys want to do the coin flip? or? Uh, yeah, let's do the coin flip. Alice, uh, since you alphabetically is first, uh, heads or tails? I'll take heads again. Yes. So, coin flip. Head. Oh, no, coin flip. Tails. Okay, so, um, Lana, you choose whether to go first or second. Um, Alice should go first. Alice should go first. Beast. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Someone was saying that, hey, don't say beast anymore. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say beast anymore. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Okay. Uh... At least whenever you, uh, whenever you're ready, we can do this. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Yep. Okay. So, um, my position is going to be um uh, against uh, against Lana's position of uh, that social media has been uh, you know more bad than good. So my position is going to be uh, that social media has been more good than bad. Um, and just as a uh, primer, uh, we're talking about social media. Social media is um, like a website for social social networking or, or like blogging or something of that nature. And really it's about people sharing information or ideas or messages um, or other types of content with each other. Um, it's in general, it's social media. It's a platform for people to be social on. Um, so... Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to sit here and defend every single decision that, say, Facebook makes or something of that nature, but that the interface, the platform, the category, social media itself, has been more positive than negative. Um, when postcards were first invented, um, people started saying, oh, man, postcards, I mean, it, people are just going to, they're going to forget how to write. Uh, you know, every time we've had some new technology uh, in place to, you know, further people's connection, uh, there have been naysayers. And there have been, you know, potentially problems with, uh, with, with, with that media. But every single time, it's been a positive. Um, it, it, like, I, like with postcards, where originally people said, well, they're going to forget, you know, how to write. People are just going to become, you know, crude. And they're not going to be able to talk anymore. And, well, now, you know, that type of media, you know, postcards to each other is, uh, you know, a simple way to keep in contact with someone when you're far away. And the same is true of social media. Um, the benefits are far outweighing the negatives um th if you have a, a friend or family member or across the country without social media there would be no way uh for you to be able to contact them you're going to send them a postcard and take two weeks to get to them or are you going to make a phone call i suppose and uh, get to talk to them on the phone or are you going to you know keep in touch with them all the time as much as you possibly can and see photos of their cats and dogs and children and such um in general, there's definitely going to be, you know, concerns that we're going to have about individual companies. Um, but when you have, a, you know, a, a bad hamburger or something, you don't say all hamburgers are bad. Um, and this is the same type of thing. here. <laughs> and uh, I kind of would like to see what Lana has to say about it so we can have like a good discussion about this part of it. Whenever are you ready, Lana? Um, so, uh, let's see. So social media has overall been bad for society. Um, my opponent so far has like cited some reasons why, um, it would be unfair to say that, um, that social media is, is bad. Um, citing postcards saying, um, that not all social media is bad just because some parts of it are bad. Um, and by saying that um, postcards were a technology. Um, so um, social media is mostly run by mega corporations that are trying to control, um, control you and um, sell you things. Um, 
So the main three um, points that I have in my favor are um, talking about information, um, misinformation, mostly through COVID denialism, um, disengagement in real life, um, and climate change. So um, first off, um, misinformation has been spread all throughout social media. It's, it's pretty commonplace to be aware of the fact that misinformation is very abundant. Um, COVID denialism specifically has been spread in, uh, far and wide by Facebook, uh, Parler, Reddit, and other big platforms. Um, uh, this denial of COVID will likely lead to more disbelief in the establishment, more people not getting the vaccine, and more people die dying overall. Um, Trump used Twitter specifically to spread a lot of his COVID den denialism because TV stations may have decided to censor him, something that's harder to do on social media. Um, my second point is talking about disengagement. Um, so social media has led to people being less engaged in their real lives in multiple ways. Um, despite knowing more about social movements, a lot of people only engage with political ideas online. Um, and I, I want to be clear, so ADHD is clearly a real developmental disability, um, but there is a recognition that A, uh, by psychology, that A, um, social environments can actually worsen and even um, cause some um, bad brain development that could develop into ADHD, and B, that ADHD is super overdiagnosed. Um, ADHD is an exaggerated form of the real world problem that I'm talking about where people are constantly detached from their real life. Um, they literally um, just like don't really pay attention to the real world and their real relationships as much as they do online. Um, where people, especially teenagers, feel that they can't socialize very well, but they're very adept at using social media. Um, this is a huge problem. It makes it so people can only engage in platforms where literally people are trying to control and censor what you can and can't talk about. Um, and this is evidenced by the fact that there are a lot of apps. Um, there's been a, a resurgence in the popularity of um, things like meditation and mindfulness, um, because this is in response to people not paying attention or being present in their daily lives. Um, this also has led to things like, uh, you know, unionizing and political action sometimes being less popular than it, it would be if people were not only engaged with these things online. Um, and three, I'm going to talk about climate change. So um, people don't think about or understand how internet usage as it exists today is uh, is terrible for the environment. Um, not only does internet usage itself take a lot of power, you know, every single picture, every single, um, you know, video that you watch um, takes power in terms of, um, you know, it, it literally takes power for you to be able to um, display that on your device. Um, there's also the fact that, you know, um, ooh, wait, uh, um, it also is required like an overhaul of our entire internet infrastructure, um, imposing that people have, um, that companies actually like allow people to get more internet usage. Um, it also is used smartphones as a medium for people to quickly access all of these functions easily to keep you engaged and keep you addicted to social media. Um, the phones, cell towers, internet access, power demands, and PC parts all play a part in climate change. Um, smartphones particularly have been an invention created solely to allow people to keep being engaged on social media. And it has been terrible for the environment with the upkeep of smartphones where people might even get one every single year. Um, and it requires a lot of rare metals and slave labor. And that's why I think the corporations that run social media um, are entirely uh, bad for society. Yeah, nice. That was literally five minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead, uh, Alice, when you're ready. And then I'll... Yep. I'll... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Lana, as well, for that introduction uh, to the to the position here. So um, you, you you brought up a f well more than a few points, but you brought up a few points. One of the points that you brought uh, that you brought up uh, was that uh, social media is run by you know mega corporations right now, and and as I already mentioned, you know agreed, mega corporations bad, um, but social media is not just run by mega corporations. In fact, 
you're on social media right now. You're on Discord. Um, and uh, it's a little difficult for me to hear someone argue that uh, all social media, you know, is run by mega corporations and, you know, is bad then because um, we're on Discord and we're having a, you know, a really positive discussion right now. Um, you know, we're having we're engaging in a way that we would not be able to engage otherwise. Um, I have no idea where you're located in the world. And here we are talking anyway. Um, the discussion of disengagement uh, and misinformation, actually, um, both are somewhat personal problems in a way. Um, you know, uh, disengagement actually is, a, it definitely is a negative effect um, that can happen, but it's not just from social media. It's actually from excessive internet use in general. Um, social media is part of the internet, but it's not the only thing on the internet. And disengagement is an effect that happens regardless. Um, there's ways to uh, control for that. Um, there's ways to avoid disengagement. Uh, and actually there's findings that suggest that, um, you know, reasonable usage of 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 the, of the internet including social media can actually be a really positive mental health effect for you um and uh I, you know honestly you, you brought up so many points in your introduction that i kind of want to let you respond to uh my my first two responses uh, uh to your points um you know uh particularly about the mega corporations you know um i i i'm not really understanding that point all that well um because uh here we are uh, having a nice positive discussion on a piece of social media. So uh, I'm not really seeing, um, uh, I'm not really seeing that all, you know, all social media is run by mega corporations and is trying to influence us and such. That doesn't really seem accurate if um, here we are and I'm not being advertised to right now. Um, one second, give me one second. Um... Um, okay, so your first point was talking about um, me using social media and claiming that because I use social media, that it must not be that bad. But it's kind of like how, you know, I might argue that capitalism is bad, but then you might argue, well, capitalism can't be that bad because you live under capitalism. And um, just because somebody engages in a behavior, you know, sexism, whatever, um, doesn't actually mean that that behavior is like necessarily like um, a choice or that they are, there aren't better alternatives. Like, for example, I personally engage in Discord because although there are cons to engaging in social media, um, in my personal life, I don't have a lot of people that I get to talk with about um, about like these types of academic subjects um, that aren't literally in academia. So I'd have to be like paying more for school to like engage with that. And just because I can't afford um, basically to, to have like a, um, more of a higher education in the subjects that I'm interested in doesn't mean that like that is like a viable alternative for me. Um, again, like, I'm not saying that that means that social media, is, that isn't a point saying that social media is bad. That is an argument against you saying that me using it means it's not bad. Right. Um, well, but the, the thing that you just said is why it's not bad is that there's definitely downsides to, to social media as like a current kind of, I guess we'll say Facebook, you know, has a monopoly in, in some ways over a particular type of social media. Um, but it's platforms like Discord, another form of social media, have positive effects like you've just talked about, about like being able to share your views and learn from other people in a way you would not be able to without some, you know, pretty extreme privileges. Um, you know, we don't really have uh, the ability to go sit on a college campus for the rest of our lives, whereas, um, you know, we can gain that type of environment in a place like Discord. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you using social media means that all social media is good. I'm saying that your use of social media is just like a lot of other people's use of social media. And that usage is giving them opportunities they would not have had otherwise, just like you just talked about, an opportunity you would not have had uh, except for a platform like this. And that's one of the advantages of social media is the opportunity that exists in a way that you would never have had access to without these platforms. Um. So going, um, so in response to that, also going to my, to my second point, um, that I was responding to you earlier, um, so about disengagement. So I would argue, although I can use social media in a healthy way, and I have like, um, done things to specifically do that, um, social media is literally built to keep you addicted to it. Um, that this is like actually like a real problem that people don't like understand, like, um, the way that social media is set up is to keep you on the platform as often as possible, like keep you engaged, like all the time. Um, I've 
like um, I've seen videos where people talk about like working for Facebook and how they had to leave because they literally had built AI um, and they felt um, guilty about it because it's literally like being at a casino where literally they are trying to keep you on as much as possible and do everything they can. And um, although I I understand how like any addiction, you know, it, it's on the responsibility of the person who has the addiction to deal with it in a healthy way. And there can be in theory, like um, a, a responsible use of um, social media. It's kind of like gambling where like um, the platform is literally set up to keep you there, to keep you like spending money, um, to keep you like not thinking about things. And I would argue in this case, like it's, a, it's a, I, I mean, if you are an anti-capitalist, to not recognize how social media is currently playing a part in keeping people complacent um, is, is like ignoring like a really big problem. Um, the disengagement, uh, oh, I was trying to take a note on you earlier and you responded really quickly. Um, the disengagement is not caused directly by um, like the use of social media, but it is caused by like the way that they build the platform to keep you engaged um, by the way that it, it's, it's almost like an abusive relationship where it makes you feel like the people in your real life don't actually get you, but these people online you're never going to meet in person, like really get you. And there are definitely ways and places like, you know, there are gay people who, um, use the internet to feel like, oh my God, like I'm not the only one. And that's awesome. But then there have been other instances where there are people who, um, you know, like Nazis who find solace in, you know, finding a community of people who also hate black people. Um, and, and it could be used for good or bad. But the problem is, like, instead of having these conversations in real life, instead of, you know, um, socialists, like, unionizing in real life, like, people um, engaging with the people around them, it, it makes everyone feel more alone at the end of the day, where, like, they feel like the people around them don't really get them. And the people online are their only true friends. And it just leads to people only being able to engage with people online because they have this, like, preconceived notion that the people around them aren't really like there for them and they can't ever really be honest with they could only be honest in these online communities so they're using um online spaces to avoid actually like having that conflict having that conversation with people in real life and it, it leads to an addiction ultimately so oh, you really love throwing a lot of points in here it's hard to respond to so many points at once um so we, we're talking about social media as a platform. We're not talking about Facebook. We're not talking about, you know, YouTube. We're talking about social media as a platform. I agree with you that places like Facebook are designed to keep you engaged, right? Um, but the thing about it is that uh, saying Facebook is bad is a very different thing than saying social media is bad. There's lots of types of social media. Um, a huge amount of, of types of social media. So when we talk about social media, we also mean the positives. We mean things like Discord or we mean um, like newer social media, uh, you know, platforms that come out. Um, it, it's not just about uh, the, 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 the companies like Facebook. Um, the other thing about that is there are negative things um, about how Facebook uh, is designed, right? It's, it's, a, it's a big company and it's, uh, you know, we're in a capitalist society and it's built... Um, literally to keep you uh, engaged so that they can show you ads, right? Um, but the other thing about it is that there's positive side effects of of, of being on uh, on social media. Um, I have friends from France and friends um, from Germany and friends from, and, and these are people that I engage with all, like consistently. Um, and I get, engage with these people in in, a, in what I would say is a very positive way. So you, you've talked about like some very negative side effects of... Um, You've talked about some negative side effects of like over engagement uh, with, with with like online media, uh, but that would happen regardless to those people. I would argue it, that the issue here is that you know you've you've essentially uh, taken away the individual uh, ability to 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 self control. Essentially, you know, like you've talked about, you're able to 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 perform that self control, um, and then you've made the claim that, like other people aren't as able to self control as you are, um, but that doesn't really make much sense to me because. <laughs> Uh, you and I both seem to be able to have self-control to uh, engage in social media in a way that is positive for us. Um, so just saying that other people engage, you know, in, in negatively with social media just doesn't really make sense to me. It doesn't really seem particularly intuitive to 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 kind of apply that to everyone else. Um, you know, for for me, social media has been a, a way to contact people I would never have been able to contact. 
Um, and that's definitely uh, something that's been beneficial for me. And, uh, you know, anecdotally, of course, um, that's something that I've heard uh, on here specifically. Um, you know, we've got 20, I believe, 20 uh, guilds uh, covering a variety of topics. Another way that just is, uh, you know, engagement that would know people would not have been able to have otherwise. So I definitely hear what you're saying about the people who engage, uh, you know, over engage with the Internet. But I think those people would have retracted into themselves regardless. Um, OK, so you may. Um, by the way, I'm taking notes. I would recommend you take notes. It's very helpful. Um, so a. Um, you talk about Facebook being bad, but like other social media being good. So I recognize that there, so let's, let's take blogging for an example. So blogging is something that didn't necessarily have to be bad, right? There was like a point in time where blogging was like pretty chill and like super awesome. And now when you like go on blogs and stuff, they're super full of ads. Like if I look up like any recipe online, there's literally a meme. If you look up any sort of like cooking things online where like there's like a two hour long life origin story. And then there's like a million ads on the side because they want you to like keep engaging with the parts that have the most ads. And um, so Originally, there were companies that had like blogs and everything, and then like Blogger was bought by like Google. Um, so my point isn't really that like the social media couldn't be good. Um, it's actually like the tech companies that keep like eating each other um, because like like basically because of capitalism. It's really difficult um, for something to exist that isn't super um, for profit at the end of the day. Um, and I think eventually, um, if Discord doesn't get bought, it might be because of like the moral position of like the people who started it. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, like there are going to be offers and, and we don't know what will happen to Discord eventually. Um, so second, you talked about the positive side effects of social media um, by like being able to engage with people all over the world. I think that's like a great thing. Um, there's also um, the issue where, you know, people will kind of, you know, going back to like the misinformation thing, you might be able to meet people from all of the world and like they'll talk about what's going on in their lives and you kind of like take their opinion as like their anecdote as like reality. So like going back to like my point about misinformation where like um, people, you know, if you read a book, for example, there have to be a lot of like... Um, so like having relationships with people is great, but like learning about other countries just from anecdotes from people is like not a good thing. Um, like reading a book has to go through a lot of like processes and like um, ways of uh, like sorting out bias um, that like a person talking about their personal life in another country might not. Um, and another thing, so um, you argued that because I haven't, I'm not currently disengaged in my real life and that because I currently can use social media responsibly um like I, there have been points in my life where I couldn't um the only reason I can't is like honestly a coincidence of like me living with my partner me having a job that I actually enjoy and um like me having gone through multiple periods of my life where I have to literally just cut off all social media use um, and also like me having to cut off like a lot of big platforms. I had to just recently stop using Reddit like a year ago for like months um, to get to the point where I wasn't like addicted to it. Like literally I would just like open my phone and I would just open it automatically. I wouldn't even know what I was trying to do. I would like be looking up something else and literally I would just open up Reddit because I was so addicted to it. And just because I'm not currently super addicted to social media and I would argue in a sense I might be addicted to Discord now to be honest. Um, just because I think I'm currently using it responsibly doesn't actually mean, A, that I am. I could totally be wrong. I could totally just be addicted to it anyway. Um, and and more importantly, just because some people can doesn't actually mean it's okay. Like, gambling isn't good. Like, the gambling industry isn't good because we're not talking about like the use of social media. I'm talking about like social media as a whole. The industry of gambling is not okay just because some people can gamble responsibly. Like there are always going to be people whose like lives are ruined by these things. There's always going to be like the capital riots. There's always going to be COVID deniers. Um, there's always going to be the, these people who, who take it to the extreme. 
Um, and I think that overall the extremes are so bad for society that I think ultimately it's like, it's not okay because there are big companies that get so much money from these few people who are literally like murdering people, not getting their vaccine. And, you know, we're the ones who have to pay for it. So the, the discussion here, just a reminder for everyone who's listening is, is, is the discussion is about social media and whether essentially whether social media is like a, you know, a, a net negative for society. And, and I'm saying it, it's not a net negative. Um, and the, 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 the points that you've made, um, uh, again here the the, fir the first point regarding um how big companies are using social media big companies like facebook or or even you know the various blogging platforms about how they're using it to um to advertise to people um the entire internet is designed to advertise to people um actually if you look around if you go outside and the you know look pretty much anywhere near you you're going to find that everything is advertising to you um even if you don't really realize it um so I, I'm not, I don't really uh, particularly buy the uh, the advertisement side of things as being an issue at all. Um, uh, not any more, I guess, than uh, being outside, uh, driving down the road is. Um, everything advertises to you. That's sadly a side effect of being in a uh, capitalist society. Um, and I would say, sure, capitalism bad, agreed. But capitalism bad does not translate to um, you know social media bad. Um, should we reduce advertisement on these platforms? Absolutely. But that doesn't make the platform itself bad. Um, and then you discussed um, anecdotes. Uh, you discussed that, um, you know, you're reading anecdotal experience from someone um, is not uh, enough to, to know, essentially, someone else's experience. I definitely would agree there, right? Anecdotal experiences are not enough to form 100% of an opinion. Um, but the thing about it is that uh, you mentioned, so for instance, a book. Um, if we're talking about a, uh, a I don't know, a, 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 some sort of research, uh, you know, paper or something of that nature, then yeah, absolutely. Research paper is a much better source than anecdotes. Most books are anecdotes. Um, if you think about pretty much any book that's been written, if you think about, uh, you know, uh, the, what is that, uh, you know, Love, Laugh, Live or whatever the heck that one was, um, that's just an anecdote about some lady who, uh, you know, slept around across uh, multiple countries. Um, it's not exactly a great picture of those countries, is it? Um, you know, so just because you could have uh, these anecdotes on social media doesn't make uh, social media the source of all anecdotal evidence. Um, it doesn't make books inherently better either than social media. Just like anything else, you need to take in a lot of information, a lot of different opinions, and a lot of different viewpoints. And social media can enable you to do that, can enable you to take those viewpoints in, uh, in a way that nothing else can, which is what the point is here. Um, reading uh, lots of books is a fantastic idea, but I can see literally thousands of people's opinions um, and synthesize those together in a way that is entirely different than what I could do with an individual's book. And then finally... Um, you discussed the extremes. You discussed um, that, uh, you know, just because your experience uh, has been positive at times um, and that you're not going to extremes doesn't mean that other people uh, go, don't go to extremes. Agreed, that's true. Some people do go to extremes. But like you pointed out, um, social media is not the only place that people are going to go to those extremes. Um, we're going to have the effect of hikikomori um, regardless of whether they're social media or not. Most of those, uh, most, most, of, most of the people who are shut-ins like that actually aren't even on social media. They're playing games or something of that nature. Um, it, and the same is true of, uh, you've mentioned, you know, uh, like white supremacists and Nazis and such. Um, and they're, they congregate anyway. Um, that's kind of one of the things that happens with groups like that. They congregate regardless. Um, them being online actually is going to expose them to more views than they would get if they weren't online, if they weren't uh, participating in social media. Um, and these big companies uh, that you've talked about actually um, are hard for people who are, you know, neo-Nazis or white supremacists. It's very hard for them to get a foothold on those types of platforms. You know, Parler, you've mentioned Parler. Parler is a very specific platform designed specifically for white supremacists. Um, it, just like we've kind of talked about here is there's different uh, social media, different platforms. And the thing about it is that uh, just because you can point out one uh, you know, platform that has uh, some uh, pretty heavy uh, capitalist backing, doesn't mean that there's not other newer pieces of social media that don't have as much, you know, as much uh, capitalist backing. Um, the argument we're having here is not about whether capitalism is bad. It's about whether social media itself is bad. And we've pointed out a huge amount of positives, the two of us together. Um, and that's kind of the, the thing that, that they have here is that we need to make an argument about social media as a whole, not just about one company like Facebook or something of that nature. Okay, 
So I'm going to start with your last point and then go back to the beginning. Um, so um, I want to be clear. Um, I'm not arguing that um, social media is always bad or anything. Um, I actually think that because social media requires so much startup capital um, to get a real foothold in the door to actually be popular, to be like usable. Like I've, I've actually tried on a personal level to avoid things like uh, Facebook and, and Reddit and stuff. And I've tried to use, um, what are they called? Um, Oh my God, like the like GitHub, like startup things. Um, like I've tried using apps that are not made by big companies and they are completely different because you need a lot of money to co like pay enough people to code um, basically like a good website. I forget the open source. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be open source, but I'm just talking about like um, I have tried open source apps and stuff and they're just completely different. They don't feel the same at all because the amount of money that you need for an app to be like engaging because of the fact that it takes so much time and effort to pay all of the people who are going to code and make your website or, or app or whatever better um, just takes too much money. Um, you have to advertise on them and that's not always a bad thing. Right. Um, but you know, like, you can't ignore the fact that um, it takes a lot of startup that people couldn't just make their own social media currently. That's not currently like really an option. So it's mostly big companies that are going to keep doing this. Things like Discord are, are a big rarity and they rely on a bunch of um, super tech people like being interested in the project and personally like donating in the early years or them like doing it in their free time and, and basically suffering through the parts where it sucks. Um, Anna, it's oh, it's really I, inter it's really interesting to me that you say that social media can't be you know startup like you know, like open source like this. Do um, you know how Facebook started? With a with a Harvard graduate. It didn't start. Uh, he was actually still in college, and it wasn't just one person. It was actually you know three people. But point is that it was done in a. It was done while simultaneously going through a college education, um, and it was run on basically servers uh, in the basement of Harvard. It, you don't need a lot of uh, of, of capital to start so, uh, a social media platform. Uh, you need something interesting and engaging. And Facebook started that way. Um, like I just want to kind of. Uh, point out that that part of it is that um, things like Parler, for instance, Parler didn't start up with a lot of capital. You don't really need a lot of capital anymore to to start your own website or you start your own uh, piece of, of social media. You need to have the ability to do it, and that's rare. Um, the ability is rare. Um, so you've tried some so, some open source platforms and had a bad experience with them. Um, I'm not surprised to hear that because there's a lot of open source platforms um, and. Uh, you know, they're going to all be uh, a little bit different. You need to find one that is quality. And sure, lots of capital means lots of advertising uh, means that, you know, you can get more popular quicker, like Parler got funding pretty quickly. Uh, and that made it, uh, you know, start much faster, right? Spending lots of money in a capitalist society is going to get you uh, much more attention much more quickly, right? Um. So you kind of, you kind of like made my point for me, which is that like, uh, Facebook started and it's in the basement uh, or in the garage or whatever and it look what it is now like that's kind of my point is that like just because like it might start out one way like the way that it gets popular the way that people actually use it and the way that it affects most people is because of the capital like Facebook like started out where it was like for college kids and stuff but it started getting bigger because of the funding that was involved in it because the advertisements the advertisements are required to make it like bigger um, this was true of YouTube as well. YouTube started as like a super basic website and then they got the partner program and then they started doing like ads and then they started doing all these other things. Um, and uh, let's see, going back to what you, your points you made before. Um, so yeah, I talked about advertisements. Um, uh, I agree that social, um, so you talked about how books um, don't necessarily mean that they're right. Like books can be anecdotes too. And I don't disagree. Um, but I would argue that social media, um, even though like social media currently is doing this thing where like it is pushing people to talk about politics because that's what drives engagement now. Um, because literally like in your brain, um, the part of your brain that experiences 
anger is super tied to dopamine. So you keep doing it because you're angry. So they've found that it's really easy to get people politically engaged and then just to get them mad at each other over and over again for like engagement. Um, and the problem is, isn't the fact that they're bringing up politics or anything. Cause I, I mean, no matter what platform you have, you're going to have Nazis, you're going to have social justice people, you're going to have progressives, you're going to have Democrats, Republicans, you're going to have it like, a, that's fine. Um, even in real life, like you're still going to have these people that are just maybe not going to talk about it as much. But the problem is the fact that social media like um, relies on engagement based on like labels and like very vague things, especially like on Twitter, where people fight who like would normally just disagree. But because the platform is driven by engagement, they like use their labels and like very like half arguments to like start entire like wars like across the whole platform. Um, and um, also I wanted to point out, you brought up Parler and Parler to my knowledge is like coming back. Like it's not banned anymore. Um, I forget, I, I don't know what's coming of that. I just wanted to point out that Parler was banned for a while, um, that technically it's coming back. I don't know if they're making any changes for the positive. Like, I'm not sure. I'm just bringing up that it is coming back to my knowledge. Um, and that, um, but I, I don't think that social media is actually, um, it, it does this, it, again, like the misinformation thing, it takes advantage of the fact that people want to know things. They want to know something that they've never known before, but they don't actually go through the effort of like learning the whole thing, which is like a hard, lengthy process. They're involved in like very short bursts of like, oh, I'm going to research this thing right now, or like, oh, I'm going to talk about this thing right now, but I'm only going to give a snapshot of the truth or of like what's real and it allows for a lot of misinformation because people are are supposed to engage with it on a gut basis they're not supposed to engage with it in a long form where there's a lot of information being um you know c discussed like in a, e even in a debate at least you're having like an hour-long discussion or something but that's not what most of social media is like actually talking about um and and even if you are like debating like on a platform like on twitter on facebook Facebook on like YouTube comment sections like I mean it's two people who you know may or may not know what they're talking about or whatever but again like they're only giving like a part of the information so people learn these like half truths and stuff and they they get whole misinformation out of it like they end up being into like you might take a an actual criticism of a COVID vaccine for example and may like AstraZeneca people took the reality that AstraZeneca had some small um uh medical problems I, I forget what it was you got like a you some people were at risk for having some sort of like heart issue and people took that to mean all vaccines are bad these are really dangerous and like obviously this is always going to happen there's always going to be like um people who deny vaccines but this was like not nearly as true before social media like the movement of people who are super extreme is amplified because people are encouraged to keep having these conversations about super emotional based ideas so um you you've pointed out a few things about about social media that definitely seem seem like positives um pushing people to talk about politics. Um, definitely true that, uh, you know, engagement is, is great, uh, you know, for, for things like Facebook. But again, I'm not talking about just Facebook. I'm talking about, for instance, Discord, just like we're on here. Um, and uh, people here are also always constantly talking about politics, but there's no incentive for them to do that. So there must be something else driving them, right? Something else driving that engagement with politics. Ah, uh, maybe it's because it's actually interesting to talk to other people about what your opinions are. And, and I think that talking would happen no matter what. This is just a way for that to happen, for that discussion to happen. This is enablement um, uh, of, of discussions. And I have a lot more faith in people. Um, uh, and I think that, you know, people can make their own choices, essentially, and, and uh, come to their own conclusions with data and information. And, and that, you know, in general, if someone was going to make an assumption based on one piece of information, they were going to make that assumption regardless. Um, you talked about people using uh, labels, uh, you know, you talked about social media using uh, labels uh, as a, a way kind of to encourage uh, clashing between classes, but people use labels as a way to do that. Um, if you think about uh, when a town gets uh, like a lesbian bar or something, 
um, people say, oh, a lesbian bar, that means that they're going to, you know, we're going to have some narrow wells in here or something. You know, people use labels uh, against each other all the time. It's not just social media. Social media is, again, just another platform for people to engage on. And those people engaging are going to engage like humans. Um, humans are not perfect. Um, and then uh, you, you also kind of uh, talked about one of the one of the positives is is people want to know new things. Uh, social media is a great way to know new things. Um, are people going to sometimes engage um, kind of like irresponsibly? Yeah, absolutely. But they're going to do that in real life as well. Um, we didn't, you know, have the Holocaust or something like that because people were really thinking through how they were engaging. Um, they didn't think through. Uh, things you know humans pressure each other that is the reality of the world the so social media itself is not causing everyone to go uh, be humans uh, we're already human um and then finally you, you know you mentioned that uh people who are you know denying vaccines denying you know the covid vaccine and such um that it was always going to happen um and i agree with you it was always going to happen social media didn't cause that again social media engage it allows and and encourages engagement right with a lot of different people. And that means that people are going to congregate when they have similar views. They were going to congregate regardless. Um, whether it was you know, social media or not, um, people were going to congregate. Uh, that's the thing here, uh, you know, is that uh, humans want to congregate. Humans want to uh, share their ideas. They want to talk. Social media enables that discussion. It enables that talking between lots of different people. And you've talked only about uh, these these really negative things about people's engagement. But again, the thing about social media is that you can find people who have common ground with you. Go look at the LGBT uh, guild here. Those are people that uh, would potentially never have been able to talk to other people that share their same views. Um, you, you think about somebody who's living in a country where it's illegal to be gay um, or legal to be trans. Um, that is something that they would never have had access to talking to other people who are like them. And it's something that is absolutely moving for those people. Um, it, it's, it's just, it's to me, the, the, the focus on, you know, only these, these negative effects ignores the greater good that exists because of this engagement that is actually able uh, to be done between people, between people who are in totally different places, people who are from totally different backgrounds. These are so many people that would never have gotten to talk to each other if not for social media. Um, I, I definitely understand what you're talking about, but you're not talking about effects of social media. You're talking about humans being human. And no, we're not perfect. So we're going to have some problems like that. We're going to have, uh, we're in a society, right? We're in a capitalist society. So yeah, there's going to be people who are out here trying to make money the best they can. And yes, big companies are going to try to make money the best they can. But the flip side of that coin is that because of how engaging social media is, because of how many people are on social media, you get to see and talk to people that you would never have been able to engage with otherwise. Um, the thing about uh, saying that social media is a net negative, we'd have to show that that engagement with lots of different types of people is a net negative, and I'm just not seeing that happening here. I'm seeing some you know, really specific points being made about uh, capitalism. Um, about how how you know capitalism is a negative, about how this focus on uh, advertising revenue is a negative. I agree with you that with those things, but the platform itself, social media itself, doesn't seem to be a net negative. We've both talked about the positives of it. Okay. Um, thank you, Alice, and thank you, Lana. Uh, before uh, Lana, I'll let you, Lana, respond to to what Alice said. Then I want you to do your closing statement afterwards. Okay. So you'll have uh, five minutes for the response, five minutes for the closing statement. And then since Alice started, I'll let her have the closing last closing statement, okay? The idea of the closing statement is to wrap up <coughs> and try to convince the judges, me and Dell, uh, whether uh, uh, to convince me your position, okay? Um, go ahead, Lana, when, you, when you're ready. Um. Okay. Um, so, okay. So in response, um, I, I do agree that people are going to people no matter what, you know what I mean? Um, no matter whether you have writing or whether you have social media, you know, whatever, you're still going to have, um, people who ultimately like just do the wrong thing who are, you know, very outlandish, very extreme. The problem is, is that social media literally takes people's gut reactions 
um, and amplifies them. You know, there are entire, there, there was, um, you know, Gamergate was a big one where, you know, some people were just kind of like on the hype train. Some people were in it to literally just bully people, but clearly there were people who were like, only on it for the hype train because they thought that there was some actual there were people on the fringes who literally got indoctrinated into like gamergate harassment because people actually thought that there was some problem with video game journalism um this is like an example of like a very clear thing where like um although there were people who were actually just extremists in that movement. Clearly, there were other people who who were just on it, like, as casuals. I'm sure a lot of people on this particular Discord were into Gamergate, um, you know, when that was going on. And um, the thing is that when you have a lot of social media things, you're trying to respond as quickly as possible. Social media encourages a lot of engagement, a lot of posts, a lot of generalizations, a lot of stereotypes. People always use things like labels like Democrat or uh, socialist or whatever. These things are always common, but this type of terminology and using it as like almost like an identity is so common on social media because you're trying to fit under the character limit. You're trying to type like some uh, a, a witty comment as as quickly as possible you're trying to respond to them because it's an, about an emotional engagement rather than an actual sharing of ideas and that is going to happen no matter what but companies are pushing people to the point where they have all these conversations in anger very often um and people were always going to deny the vaccine but how many people were actually going to join them in their movement when, you know, news shows, um, when the news said, don't do this, when the news made fun of those people? Um, that's not to say that you couldn't have um, a social media that could, like, allow people to authentically engage maybe in the future. But because currently social media is so tied to capital, I think it's really, really difficult to actually um, – allow people to to do this um and then it, it is that also included in my in my closing or okay oh. thank you very much oh, Lana. oh do you want to or, or can I, I i yeah i just wanted to do like a couple of statements as my closing yeah. if you want you can definitely okay. yeah go ahead Go ahead. I'm, I'm not going to take a full five minutes, to be honest. Okay. Um, so again, like social media is like um, it, it literally pushes people to and drive engagement through emotional reactions. Um, I don't think the idea of people engaging has to be like that. But because of the way that it's it's funded by money, it's about making money. And it, it isn't just about like um, – showing people a certain thing it's not about reading a book and putting it down it's not about watching tv and that show being over it's not about watching a movie and going home it's about literally like every free moment in your life for some people where you're literally like on discord hanging out with your friends you're on reddit like scrolling you're on tiktok watching and watching and watching and it it literally colors your entire understanding of how social interaction ought to be um, and I think ignoring that is kind of like glazing over a lot of especially young people's experience where they never even really got to form a social identity before social media took over their lives. Um, capitalism definitely plays a role and like you don't even actually have to hate capitalism to understand why tech companies taking advantage of this is like horrible like you don't even actually have to oppose capitalism you can just understand that monopolies are bad and we shouldn't have them and basically what's happening is like there's a bunch of um social media monopolies like tech monopolies that literally just make a ton of money by pushing people to engage in a sort of way to you know understand their experiences in this certain certain way to censor messages that they don't like and for that to be the, honestly one of the main ways that a lot of people engage with people that they don't see at work every day um you know there are certain things you can't talk about in private messages because they uh violate the terms of service you can't talk about this you can't talk about that you know um and, and this always happens this is going to happen anywhere but the amount of strictness that they can do because of ai because of the technology that's involved it, it makes it really difficult to separate um where people actually having opinions on what ought to be done and people just coding ai to like just figure out how to ban people that you don't like um where you know tumblr had a huge thing where 
um, when they banned porn, a lot of things that weren't porn also got banned because the AI that they used to ban content sometimes picked up things that were like plants. Um, you know, using AI and like having this huge aggregate of things um, and not even talking about how, again, like to reiterate, like the impacts on climate change are huge um, because of the amount of smartphones. You need, a, you need a smartphone to have social media. You can't just have social media when you go home because if you are going to meet somewhere, if you're going to meet someone on Facebook dating, you have to have your Facebook messenger account on your phone with you when you're going to the date. Um, and, and and just the idea that you um, all of your life is kind of dictated by social media in a sense now. Um, for a lot of people, that's some of the only ways that they get to connect with their old friends from high school. For a lot of young people who really like TikTok, like that's like their understanding of like social interaction now. That's like their culture in whole. Um, so yeah, I think uh, social media has been overall like just a bad for society, and there are positive parts of it but overall i just think it's really destructive okay alice your uh, final statement and then we'll wrap this up go ahead when you're sure ready. Mm -hmm. okay thank you lana thank you for your closing statements there so in the 1890s postcards uh, started having pictures on them and people started talking about how those pictures were going to make people forget how to read that uh forget how to write, that they were going to uh, just become crude and, and just not appropriate anymore. And the discussion that we've just had essentially is the same type of discussion. Social media is going to cause all these problems. It's going to cause terrible engagement. We're going to have all these insane issues with uh, engaging with them, engaging with like white supremacists and Nazis and all these problems. But in reality... What social media has given us is discussion and engagement with people we've never gotten to see before, never gotten to talk to. Again, I've got friends from all over the world that I get to talk to. We get to have discussions like this with people that we would never have gotten to see in person, in real life. Um, we get to have friends that we would never have had without social media. We get to hear about other people's stories and start empathizing with other people that we would never have heard from. We find communities that we can connect to that we would not have been able to have potentially uh, in the rest in our in our life outside of social media. Um, the world is smaller uh, today due to social media, and this is a positive. This is a good thing. Um, the world being smaller, being able to see experiences from people from all over the world, is only a positive. Capitalism uh, and its effects have been terrible for society, but social media has not. Social media has let us connect with people. Uh, that we that we've been able to talk to, that we wouldn't be able to talk to otherwise. Social media helps news spread all over the world in a way that just would not be possible without it. Social media helps you find communities that agree with you or communities that disagree with you, people that you get to uh, to talk to that you potentially just would never have seen. It's a very different situation than what Lana has described here. Lana describes social media as only the playground of uh, you know the rich and powerful co companies. You know feeding all their information into you and just getting your reaction. But that doesn't seem to be what's actually happening. Lana and I have just had an hour-long debate that has been enabled by our use of social media. I have a friend who talks to me about how much they love wrestling and they live in France. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's an entire world that we would not have had access to without social media, without these companies, these very small people generally, starting up the, 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 these very successful things. It, Capitalism makes it so that they need to monetize them. So maybe we should talk about down with capitalism. I could agree there, but I don't think I can say down with social media. Not with all of the uh, not with all of the benefits that I personally have had and that other people I know have had. Um, so I just I really can't sit with uh, w w with saying that social media is bad uh, uh, at all. Really, um, are there negative side effects? Yes, but are those negative side effects all due to capitalism? Yes. Uh, summary here is down with capitalism, not down with social media. Nice, thank you. Uh...